Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on scientific programming using Python. Now in this tutorial, what I'm going to explain to you guys is that uh, how to do uh, fast Fourier transformation and inverse Fourier fast Fourier transformation in Python. Now, now a few things in mind. Now, if you want, uh, if you have, if you are a, a data processing engineer or a, uh, let's say uh, some uh, observation some observations and you want to see the power the frequencies or the oscillations in the time periods or the wave numbers or in, in the in the given data let's say you want to do that kind of a job at all okay uh, it's it's very easy to do okay with Fourier transforms okay now Fourier transform is applicable only for um, you know continuous functions but for discrete functions your fast Fourier transforms are possible okay these are just some in these are just inbuilt algorithms uh, based on Fourier transforms to do the same option to, 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 to do the same as that of your uh, uh, in a Fourier transform okay now uh, to do uh, to make it possible we it's possible uh, by using the options that are available in numpy and scipy modules okay now for that uh, for that what we need is that from scipy we need this option we need this uh, two functions called as fft and iFft from s scipy dot fft pack so what i'm going to do is that let me copy all this okay let me create a new file okay save it now uh, it's unlike last time you know what i'm going to do uh, wait i'm going to copy out this save it uh, uh there i'm going I'm, I'm going to set this to be how should i set it yeah fft ieft dot py okay now i50 dot i50 dot py so that uh, our functions are are, are are all available okay don't worry about this okay don't worry about this this is this is where are all available so let me copy that okay copy this and uh, paste it over here okay so let me explain you guys what's going on okay before that uh, sorry for that from okay sorry import numpy as np there you have it now don't worry now let, let's, let's explain you guys what's happening now from scipy.fft pack this is actually the fast Fourier transform package available in uh, by available in uh, available in um, scipy okay i'm going to imp i'm going to import fft and iFFT. F fft is calculates the fast fourier transforms and iFFT calculates the inverse fast fourier transform simple as that now just a few uh, points over here i'm going to set the number of points that i for the data to be n okay and the time sp uh, okay and the spacing between them is given by 1 by 64 like that now uh, okay uh, actually okay what i mean what i mean is what I, i'll explain what i uh, actually explain what i mean what what i mean over here if the if you have uh, uh, it's not spacing uh, not spacing the reciprocal or re reciprocal of value okay i'll explain what's going on over here now here what i do is that i set the value of x to vary between 0 to 2 pi 0 to 2 pi okay these are just for you know adjusting adjusting the values nothing much okay these are just for adjusting the values okay now if i were to run this up okay let me just comment this out for a minute and let me run this up okay if i were to plot uh, x comma y1 let's say uh, you'll get you'll get a plot like this because this is ca this is actually cost 20 times x so you'll get a very ran very haphazardly big plot like this you'll get a very haphazardly plot like haphazardly plot like this so not a big deal not a big deal okay you'll get a plot like this 
now what i'm going to what i'm going to do is that uh, i'll explain what this means in a minute i'm going to set x to vary between okay this is too much i'm going to set x uh, x to be linearly varying between uh, 0 and 2 pi times uh, 2 uh, 2 uh, 2 dot and pi times n by t so if you look at the value of uh, x over here okay it's going to be more or less more or less gradually increasing uh, gradually increase in uh, in increase in steps of 16 in, in, in steps of uh, n by t in steps of uh, in steps of n by t so you're going to have 64 points including the top including the first and last and they're evenly spaced between 0 and 2 pi like that that's why I meant, meant, meant like that. Nothing much. I just my, uh, just one more thing. And uh, if your uh, value, let's say, if your uh, x is time, let's say, okay, if x is time, okay, then the reciprocal of time is will be frequency. And if your x is distance, the reciprocal of that will be your wave number. Keep that uh, keep that very 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 clearly. Okay. Now th that being said, as of now, assume. Uh, Okay, uh, uh, let's t uh, let's take x as time. So so one by x is frequency. So one by x is frequency. Okay. Okay. Now y one, y two, y three are just three sinusoidal functions. There's three sinusoidal functions, okay? And now y1 is actually is actually one uh, co one uh, one composite date composite signal which has the features of all the which has the uh, vectoral uh, vectoral or uh, vectoral addition of all ve uh, addition of these three uh, waves, okay? It's just a super y is actually a composite signal which is actually a superimposition of these three wave signals, okay? Now if I do f y equals f of t of y f y equals f of t of y okay what i'm going to get is that f y will have the fourier transform of y okay don't believe me watch now if you, now the ff now this uh sorry <coughs> now this is actually your fourier transform fourier transformation okay now all your four all your fourier points okay and now if you want to plot this up okay if you want to plot this up you have to make a few adjustments to it first of all x uh, f of y f y is actually the fourier fi uh, f uh, fast fourier transform signal of y this composite signal and now uh, x f is actually linearly spaced between uh, 0 to, to uh, 0 to half 0 to t divided by half Re reason i'm choosing this is because reason i'm choosing this is because see uh, you have like uh, you have uh, 24 frequency i mean uh, you have like 64 points uh, in this entire thing in this entire x value you have 64 points okay out of the so if you do a fourier transform fourier transform only 32 of them are valid are valid the remaining 32 are just uh, alias not alias anti alias of the the previous third the the, pre, the previous the uh, f first half of the first half of the uh, uh, the four fast four transform. So if you guys want to know why why it is like that, uh, if you go open Google and uh, you know this is over. You open Google and search for Nyquist Nyquist plot. Nyquist, Nyquist diagram. Well, that's one. And also search for FFT. Pass for your transforms in Wiki, and you guys understand what's going on and what's uh, going on and everything. Okay. If you just look at these, you'll get understand what's going on. Okay. What I'm going to do is that I'm just going to find except this is nothing but your the frequency. Nothing but nothing but your frequency. Okay. With the, with respect to time, and then I'm going to set endpoints. And if I were to run this, okay run this okay before i run this what i'm going to do is that i'm going to multiply this by 2 divided by n indicating that uh, all these uh, i'm going to take the absolute values of fy 
so that uh, you'll get both all the imaginary signals and everything are just merged up to form one composite signal okay and then i'm going to take them between 0 to 0 by n, n by n by 2 and i'm going to plot it now if you run this up there you have it this is actually your fast fourier signal <coughs> this is actually a fast fourier transform now we see now we see uh, if you look at this if you look at the frequency if you look at the frequencies uh, uh in the in this signal you have three frequencies 20 10 and 5 and you see in the outcoming uh, 50 you have three you have peaks at five of the uh, five po uh, three points this peak corresponds to the frequency uh, freq uh, frequency 5 hertz this is 10 hertz and this is 20 hertz okay since x is time now your va now these values are actually free hertz okay and now what i'm and that they kind of explains it i'm just going to make i'm just going to create the, this will actually be in uh, frequencies okay <coughs> this is uh, going to be actually in frequencies and uh, this i'm plotting a frequency on the y axis i'm sorry x axis and the strength f of t strength on the signal strength on the x axis so i mean sorry frequency on uh, frequency on the x axis signal strength on the y axis and that's it that, this is how you get the fourier transform so okay now if you notice from this main signal you're able to split the sine plus split the uh, fourier components out of it the frequency components out of it so uh, that kind of proves it proves it if you have a random signal let's say and for which you for which there are a lot of values and everything you'll get lot of spikes indicating that each uh, in lot of spikes and each spike will indicate that uh, it is uh, that corresponds to certain frequency or oscillation like that now here so the, since the may the composite value y has only three uh, components in it one is a one which has a frequency of 20 hertz other component which has a frequency of 10 hertz other components at a frequency of 5 hertz you get the major signals popping up bit popping up at 5 little close to 10 a little close to 20 okay and that is that is how you guys do a fourier transform that is how you guys do a fourier transform and uh, just one more okay forgot uh, import matplotlib the dot pi plot as plt okay that's it so that uh, th that's how you run this fine that's how you run this okay uh, where were we yeah Okay, now this this is how you do the Fourier transform. This is actually an extremely simple of it, simple explanation, but that holds good. And similarly, if you want to do the inverse Fourier transform, is you do the same, but the only thing is take all the values. Okay, uh, not this. Plot them over here. Okay, plt dot. Sorry. plt dot figure figure one okay and now plt dot figure two okay now if I were to run this check this out I'm going to get two figures and this is actually this is actually my uh, the fast fourier transform figure and if i take the actual values without any alteration and i just do an inverse fourier transform of it i get this figure okay and uh, y4 is actually the recreated signal from the fast fourier transform which is plotted in blue and uh, y is actually the actual signal and uh, you getting an imposition like this because initially the blue curve is plotted and then the red curve is plotted so they are superimposed it but if you want to check whether they are not superimposed whether they are okay or not okay save them up just change the alteration just change the order and then run them again there you have it clearly indicating clearly indicating that the plots are superimposed and they are exactly the same this way you are able to get a fourier transform you are able to do a fourier transform and fast fourier trans inverse for you are able to do a fast fourier transform and inverse fast fourier transform okay see you, you have a superimposition of also
okay that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial i know i mean to be honest i know this is a little bit of a lousy tutorial because i'm not that good with fourier transforms i haven't done much fourier transforms before uh, but i guess you guys are able to understand what's going on okay hope that hope 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 that's i hope hope you guys are fine with the explanation okay and uh, next tutorial i'll be explaining guys little bit of those basic statistical operations okay and then finally we'll be moving to the next stop uh, we'll go to the next tutorials next uh, session session 4 where we'll talk we'll talk about a uh, little bit about uh, uh, working with ipad and notebooks and stuff okay thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time